The technique of derived variables uh, comes up in analyzing state machines. So let's just take a quick look at it together. Uh, so a derived variable is simply a function on the states of a state machine that assigns some value to the states. Um, so it's just a, that kind of a function mapping. Uh, if the values happen to be, say, the non-negative integers, it's called non-negative integer valued, but it could be real valued, complex valued, uh, and even take on uh, other kinds of odd kinds of values, not necessarily numerical. No pun there, not odd numbers, but unusual values. So let's look at the example of the robot on the grid. The states were pairs of non-negative integers, giving the coordinates of where the robot was. Uh, and one of the derived variables that we found was really useful was the sum value sigma uh, of a state, which is defined to be x plus y. Um, and this would be a non-negative integer valued derived variable. So the word derived comes because uh, we're making it up. It's not part of the specification of the state machine or part of the uh, program that defines the spec the, the state machine. So in the robot example, the actual states were composed of the two coordinates x and y, but the derived variable that we made up was their sum, a sigma. Uh, another useful derived variable for that uh, robot example was the, uh, the parity of sigma, whether or not uh, the number was even or odd. So, so sigma is a 0, 1 valued variable, which takes the value 0 if the sum is uh, even and one if the sum is odd. So in the case of fast exponentiation, we looked at the actual variable z, um, which was part of the invariant and a crucial part of the program. And what we noticed about z was that um, z was a strictly decreasing and natural number valued variable. As a matter of fact, we noticed that it halved at each step, but its values were non-negative integers and it's strictly decreasing at every step. So that implies by the well ordering principle that it will take a minimum value. And what we know about the minimum value of a strictly decreasing variable is that the algorithm is stuck because uh, it, once z has reached its minimum value, if the, if the uh, machine took another step, then it would get smaller. So it can't. It means that uh, the algorithm has to terminate. So this gives you a general methodology for proving termination. Find a non-negative integer valued strictly decreasing variable. Guarantees the program stops. As a matter of fact, you can say uh, sometimes how long it will take for the program to stop. As we saw with fast exponentiation, it took not z, which was the obvious bound, but in fact log of z, because z not only went down at every step, it got halved at every step. So in general, the concept of a strictly decreasing variable is one, as shown here, that at every step of the state machine, at each transition, it gets strictly smaller. Um, a related idea is a weakly decreasing variable. These are not uh, necessarily useful for proving termination, but uh, they uh, are often useful, as you'll see uh, as we progress through the term, uh, examples where it helps you analyze the behavior of the algorithm. So a weakly decreasing variable is one which goes down or stays constant. Uh, it never gets larger. Um, so if we looked at the example of sigma, the sum of the coordinates, that's up and down all over the place. It's neither increasing nor decreasing. The other extreme is the parity variable pi, which was the uh, zero or one according to whether or not the sum of the coordinates was even or odd. And pi is a constant. And that means that it's both weakly increasing and weakly decreasing in the degenerate sense that weakly increasing is allowed to say the same. In fact, something is weakly increasing and weakly decreasing if and only if it's a constant. By the way, uh, we used to call uh, weakly decreasing variables non-increasing, which is the standard terminology in the field in calculus to talk about non-increasing functions. Um, and we just found that it caused a lot of confusion because you have to remember that um, non-increasing is not the same as not increasing. So there's an example of a function that is not 
increasing, but it's certainly not non-increasing. And if that didn't register, I'll let you think about it. By the way, this method of proving termination by finding a strictly decreasing a uh, natural number valued variable generalizes straightforwardly to a variable which takes on values from a well-ordered set of real numbers. Uh, remember, a well-ordered set of real numbers, is, one of the definitions of it is that it's a set of numbers where it's impossible to find an infinite decreasing sequence of values, w0 less than w1, less than w2, less than w1 going on forever. If that can't happen, uh, and, uh, then the set is called well-ordered. Of course, the non-negative integers are the most obvious basic case, but there are a bunch of others described uh, in the notes. Uh, and, and in general, the termination principle is that if you can find a strictly decreasing uh, variable, a derived variable whose values always come from a well-ordered set, that also is a way to prove termination. That's going to guarantee termination for the same reason that the variable will have to take a minimum value. That's the other definition of well-ordered. And when it does, the machine can't move anymore.